Raza has launched their X4L which is the successor of the X4 that we saw quite some time back. They are currently selling the X4L as a portable PC that fits in your pocket. It comes with a network installer with which you can install any OS without the need to create a bootable disk to install Windows, Linux or other operating systems. In terms of size, it is two times the size of the X4 and weighs about 298 grams. Now the X4 and the X4L both make use of the Intel N100 which is a quad core x86 processor that can go up to 3.4 GHz. This means you can install any OS including Windows on it. Now compared to the X4, the X4L has a dual 32-bit bus size allowing it to take full capability of the LPDDR5 RAM that comes soldered onto board. It also now has a CPU fan that controls the fan speed based on the temperature and you can set the values in the BIOS. Now let's open up this device and see the X4L board that is inside it. Now to open this device we need to remove the four screws on the corners so that we can remove the back plate. Then you have this protective film which protects the board from the back plate which is made out of metal. Now this metal back plate also has this thermal pad which helps to radiate the heat from the NVMe via the back plate. Now inside this we have a 256 GB NVMe drive from Lexar which is of the size 2280. Now this is an NVMe that supports Gen 3 speeds and it is connected to this M.2 M key connector that supports full 4 lane PCI Express Gen 3 key capabilities. Now in order to remove this board I made use of this prying tool in order to lift the board from this case which is made out of hard plastic. Now once I removed the board this is how the board looks like with the heatsink and the fan attached to the board using four screws. Now we can remove all those four screws that are holding this heatsink to this board and once you do that we see that there is a thermal pad between the heatsink and the processor. Now we can go ahead and disconnect the heatsink fan from this board and this heatsink is made out of metal with the fan connected to the heatsink using screws. Now the fan speed is controllable via the 4 pin input that this fan has. Now let's go ahead and look at the various components that this board has. Firstly, we have this Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 module that has these antennas connected to it. Then we have this 3 volt CMOS battery next to it. Then we have is this USB 2.0 and 3 USB 3.0 ports. Now in the corner we have this reset button in order to enable the Ruby installer. Next to that we have this USB-C power delivery port that requires input of 12 volt and 3 amperes. Next to that we have this RJ45 port that supports speeds of 2.5 gigabit wired ethernet. Then we have are these two HDMI ports that supports 4K at 60 frames per second. Next to that we have is this 3.5mm jack that supports audio input and output. Now this entire board is powered by an N100 which has 4 cores and 4 threads that can have turbo speeds of 3.4 GHz. Now this is right now below this thermal pad but we are not going to remove this right now such that we can see how this performs out of the box. Now next to that we have these two LPDDR5 modules and this board is right now the 8GB variant. And here we have a 4 pin fan connector which controls a fan speed based on the temperature. Now on the back we have this EMMC model which right now holds the Ruby installer. Then next to that we have this clear CMOS button with which you can reset the CMOS. Then we have is this chip which controls the fan as well as the mouse and the keyboard. Now if you see here there are these 40 pin holes which are actually meant for the GPIO pin headers. But now since this board belongs to the mini PC it does not have the GPIO pin headers as well as it does not have the RP2040 that would control these GPIO pins. Now let's go ahead and assemble this board back again such that we can put this board to its paces, see how this board performs what temperatures it reaches and how the overall performance of this board is. So let's go ahead and look into that. Now to start off, this device comes with a recovery installer called as Ruby which is developed by the Ratsa team. To enter the recovery mode, connect the LAN cable and press the recovery button while the device turns on. Once you do that, you will be then presented with this network installer with which you can install OpenWRT, Ubuntu, Windows 10 and Fedora. 
Now you can access this installer on a different computer by just using the ruby.local URL and then you can select the operating system and start the installation remotely. Now I installed Windows 10 with this and booted it up to see all the drivers were already pre-installed and I didn't have to install anything. Obviously, you will have to activate Windows by providing a Windows activation key. This provides a quick way to get started with the device by installing the operating system just like how the Raspberry Pi has their own network installer. Next, I installed the latest Windows 11 using a bootable USB drive and checked with CPU Z which showed that the bus specification as PCI Express 3.2. In the memory section, it showed the type as DDR5 and this time we have two 32-bit channel which in the case of the X4 was a single 32-bit channel. I then checked the memory slots and it showed 4 slots of 2GB LPDDR5 RAM. The first thing that I tested was the NVMe speeds. I got about 3400 megabytes per second for reads on Windows while on Ubuntu I was getting about 2400 megabytes per second. I then tested the Ethernet port speeds using iPOF3 and I was able to get speeds of about 2300 megabytes per second with the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. I then stress tested the device to see to what extent I can push it. At idle, I have seen the temperatures reaching 55 to 60 degrees on Windows, while on Ubuntu it was about 50 to 55 degrees. I then started a stress test and the temperatures jumped to about 90 degrees Celsius. It was then hitting the power limits of 10 watts, which led to a little bit of CPU throttling. However, on prolonged stress testing, for about 5 minutes the temperature kept rising, reaching about 100 degrees. I then stopped the test assuming it may cause some damage to the CPU. This is with the X4L sitting on the bottom of the table. Most of the heat was felt at the bottom metal plate and it made the table surface a bit hot. I then started a stress test on Ubuntu and the temperatures rose to about 80 degrees Celsius. On keeping it under stress test, I did not see any CPU throttling and the temperatures rose to about 95 degrees with nearly 7 minutes of stress testing. So it performed better on Linux compared to Windows. Okay, just a quick edit. Right now while I was editing the video, I just thought maybe I should do the same thing what I did for the X4. I replaced the thermal pad with the heatsink paste and then after that I checked that the idle temperatures on Windows reduced by 5 degrees whereas on Ubuntu it reduced by nearly 8 degrees. Then I also ran the stress test and I saw that the temperatures on Windows did not exceed over 85 degrees for nearly 10 minutes of stress testing and on Ubuntu also the temperatures did not go above 80 degrees for up to 10 minutes of stress testing. So I think using the thermal paste is definitely better than using the thermal pad for CPUs like the Intel N100. So now let's go back to the video again. Then I ran the Geekbench test and it scored about 10% better than the X4 on Windows. While on Ubuntu, there was not much any difference compared to the X4. Next I ran the memory bandwidth test and this gave me better results for the X4L. The X4L performed 35% better than the X4 for mem copy while the block copy performed 26% better. This is a significant improvement over the X4 due to the dual 32-bit channel for accessing the memory if you are planning to run some memory intensive applications. Next, I know most of you would like to see the tiny mem bench score, so I ran it to see that the X4L performed 30% better for C copy, around 16% better for C fill, 23% better for standard mem copy, and around 21% better for standard mem set. Now, if you have some tests that you would like me to perform, let me know into the comments below and also please consider subscribing to this channel to help the YouTube algorithm recommend my channel to others. Since I make videos around home automation, I had to test the performance of the local voice assistant with Home Assistant on this device. I installed Home Assistant Setup Whisper for speech to text with the small int 8 model and Piper for text to speech and Whisper took about 2.9 seconds to convert from speech to text which was a little bit faster than the Expo but nearly 5 times better than the Raspberry Pi 5. Now let's look at some of the use cases for this device. We can use this to run Home Assistant, run virtual machines using Proxmox, run a network attached storage using Open Media World or just use it as a portable PC to run Windows on it. 
Now in terms of the hardware, we saw some GPR pin holes and I guess Ratsa will sell the X4L with the RP2040 with GPR pins as a separate single port computer. Now if you are not familiar with how the X4 performs, I have a video link somewhere here as well as into the description below wherein I have shown you how it performs under stress and what I have done to improve its efficiency. Now I bought this device that allows you to connect SATA drives to the M.2 M key PCIe slot. Now I might connect this to a Raspberry Pi or the X4L. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to see the full video once it is out. Now I will put all the benchmarking details of the X4L in the article that I will link into the video description below. Now if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. If you want, you can support my work by buying me a coffee or supporting me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.